gadgets. I guess that would be Darcy. Well, fair enough. Let's just try to keep this professional. Let's see how it goes. About time you got here. Guess you were too busy laughing it up from the weapons range, huh? You got me good there. I'm here for training. Oh, I know. And the course is just about set up for you, too. Hold your horses. I'm glad you finally showed up. Thought you might have gotten lost on the way here. Or were too busy beating up some more guards. This isn't the only orientation I have to take, Agent. I arrived as quickly as I could. Yeah, sure. Oh, by the way, not a good idea. Hitting the guards, I mean. The ones here have a lot of time on their hands. And that means a lot of time to hold grudges. I'll keep that in mind, but I wasn't expecting to be drugged and attacked. A good agent's ready for anything, Mikey. But enough chit-chat. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Well, you do. I'm mostly here as an observer. Don't call me Mikey. I'll be doing your evaluation, too. What's that out there? A used car lot? A target range for you. For me, more like a shooting gallery. Head out the door there and we'll get started. All right, then. Open the locker and equip yourself. If you use them all, just come back and grab some more. All right, everyone's favorite. Grenades. Let's see that arm of yours. Go on, start chucking them. They're concussion rounds, so don't be skittish. They sting, not kill. Well, it's not like I was very worried about what the dummies would feel, but sure. Shouldn't be too difficult. Now, try and get one through the window. No. Now for some fireworks. Try and chuck one beneath the truck and take out the gas tank. Ah, never get tired of that one. Now, see that electronic lock there? You use your EMP grenade to shut it down. It can save you time in the field. It's shut down. No more lock. There you go. All right, see that locker there? Well, let me guess. You want me to place one on the door? Nice little trap. Nice. And just in time. Hey Darcy, open up. Just some of the other guards will be pulling double shifts for a while. You know those guards you beat up when you got out of medical? Yeah, well, they're gonna be joining us in a second. You've got a head start, so if I were you, I'd set an ambush. We'd just start running. Me, I'd use the mines. That's what they're for. Let's give me first shot at Maybe we can toss it to you. Man, the doc's gonna be pissed. <laughs> All right, all done. Head on up, Mike. I'll give you a breakdown on your performance. So, Mikey, you did all right on the basic run. Easy enough. No damage taken. You know, that performance wasn't half bad. Almost as good as my record. How about we up the stakes? Take this to the big leagues. What do you have in mind? All right, me and the guards, who you already met when you woke up, pooled our petty cash. And we'd like to make you a little bet. All right, I'm listening. It's a rematch, on our terms. It's simple. Disable all the alarms and escape the area in the time provided. And you take on the winnings. If you lose, you'll owe us. Got it? Sure, why not? Mean. Just head into the range and we'll get to it, Mikey. Don't All call right me then. Mikey. Tell your team to get ready. So here we are.
rematch for you and the guards, but on their terms. So listen up. There's alarms hidden all over the course. All you need to do is shut them down, but the guards are gonna try and reset them. Every time an alarm goes off, another squad's coming in, and they all want a shot at you, trust me. Alarm goes off enough times, and you're gonna get trampled. But you have the technology to beat them, so let's see even the odds, if you can. Radio Mimic is active. Let's cancel that. Not fair. I'm gonna use some grenades. Let's get some heal up here. Let's deactivate this real quick. There we go. Getting sick of hearing them anyway. Thought they might have you for a second. Guess I was wrong. All right, head on up and I'll call someone in to clean up the course and the bodies. Pretty thorough. Made a real mess of things in a good way. That's all I need. Seeing the field dark. Twenty k. If you say so, Mikey. Yeah, that guy got some of my nerves. Still, Parker seemed to like me well enough, as did Mina. Two out of three ain't bad. Let's go have a chat with this Westridge guy then. Before I do, let's check out what I know about him. Westridge, 20 year veteran, excellent field agent, low tolerance for smart asses, act instead of talk, so he likes impatience and blunt opinions more so than by the book. Fair enough. Let's talk to him then. You guys must have spent a fortune on the TVs in this place. You all done? You tell me. Now you're learning. I have to admit I was worried whether we'd be able to keep you here after you woke up in medical. You gave our staff a run for its money. I gave it my best and so did they. Fair enough. It'll be a good excuse to up the morning drills around here. Looks like you did well on the tech portion of the test. Very well. Past Darcy's bitching, there's some real compliments in here if you look at the numbers. Mina's report on your weapon skill was impressive. In fact, I think you outperformed many other guards, and it's your first day. She's a good teacher. She is, and she has a good eye for potential. I'll let her know your opinion. And here's a surprise, a positive evaluation from Parker. On the number side as usual, but he actually took the time to write a sentence. He did? Uh, what was the sentence? You may have been right about this one, Westridge. For Parker, that's high praise. Assuming you don't let us down, Mike. Looks like that's it for the physical evaluation. Now for the hard part. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteer. Usually, we have to ask. I want to serve my country. And you think by being assigned here is the best way to do that? Give me a mission and I'll prove it. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. My opinion isn't important. Yours is. Not out in the field, and not when you're dealing directly with others. Then your opinion is all that counts. Beyond the guns, tech, and sneaking around in the dark, there's one last part of this job that nobody else here quite gets. I'm listening. Good, because listening is a large part of it. The way you talk to people, 
Your attitude. That's what we're going to discuss now. I'm not sure I understand. Is there something wrong with how I deal with people? No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? You'll see. The way you project yourself definitely affects what people think of you, and your reputation with them. And if I want to impress them? You don't always want to or need to. Having a good or bad rep with someone can actually gain you different benefits. Sometimes you want to piss someone off so they can't think straight. Other times you want to build a strong rapport with someone and talk your way out of a bad situation. All depends on your objective. This goes for your handlers as well. We're going to be sending you into a lot of dangerous places, and your only backup is going to be who you're talking to on your headset. How you treat them is going to have an effect on the success of your mission. So if I piss them off, I'm screwed? No. A handler that likes you too much and puts emotions before the mission can be just as dangerous as one who resents you. This is a long way of telling me that I should just act the way I want? And if I compromise an asset in the field by choosing the wrong path? No, again, there are no bad choices, just results. Over time, folks may hear about you and your attitude before they meet you. They may have a preconceived notion of how you're going to treat them, which can affect their reaction. Well, maybe they should take the time to know the real me. If only. Time's something no one seems to be able to spare, especially during a conversation. Although that can be a plus. If I need a breather to assess the situation, right? The clock doesn't stop when you're speaking to someone. So if you need to get your second win before a fight, making small talk can buy you time. But if I'm running on adrenaline, won't chatting take me off my guard? It can. So if you need to get to the point, act instead of fight. For example, if you don't think I have any more to teach you, then you could just say, I'm done with this. I wouldn't think any less of you. You seem to have the basics down. And if they're a target, why talk to them at all? Sometimes it is better if you shoot first. Still approaching someone to talk to them can allow you to get the drop on them if you get close enough to strike. Use it if you have to, if the conversation isn't going your way. Assuming there's even a way you want the conversation to go. So how do I know how someone wants to be treated? At least, enough to cooperate. If that's what you want to do, pay attention to the clues in your environment. Sometimes people will have advice, and intel can help. But there's another way. Read much? Yes. Usually before I'm ordered to destroy the document. There's a host of information out there through dossiers, email, and other documents that represent total research others have collected on a target, organization, or operation. And what does that get me, exactly? Sometimes you'll spot obvious triggers. People who don't respond well to smart asses like me. Others who respect loyalty, duty, a professional approach. Others who don't have time for bullshit and like it when you get to the point. But dossiers just don't contain psych information. They'll usually have combat information on your target as well. What side they favor, any past injuries, common weapons or tactics they use. Some of it blunt, some of it subtle. But if push comes to shove, it can give you an edge in combat. The more you've done your homework, the more vulnerable they'll be. Makes sense to me. I'd rather get a firefight over with as quickly as possible. Amen to that. Our records are complete, so use them when you have downtime. You have dossiers on everyone here? Yep, if you can dig them up. You might learn a few things. Sometimes reading a dossier will give you more options when dealing with others. A few facts to bring up to shake secrets loose. What about you? You should already know what makes me happy, Mike. And what pisses me off. How do I know when I have the go-ahead to start accessing files? After meeting a target or hearing their name referenced by someone else, you should have a target ID. Then hop onto the database and start doing your homework. You can usually unlock their basic information at that point. Let's start with a simple one. al Samad. That should be familiar to you. The terrorist group. Yes, you can research groups as well as people. It doesn't carry the same benefits, but it can provide useful intel in the field. Talking to people about others is a good way to help gain dossier information. Sometimes people will have information on someone that can unlock a brand new thread in your computer search. Okay, so I've suffered through your interrogation. I know how to give one if need be. Am I ready or not? We'll see. Meet me in the command center, and I can give you a proper mission briefing. Good, because I'm sick of this room. Trust me, Mike. If it was up to me, you'd never see this interrogation cell again. Still, he seems to respect me from so far. Almost three out of four. 
recognize him. That's Sheik Ali Shahid, the voice of Al Samad. The guy from the news from reports. They say he was responsible for shooting down that airliner in the Middle East. Yeah, he got his hands on some prototype Halbeck technology. A missile with a multi-stage targeting system called Jacob's Ladder. That airliner was his first target. Specs and shadiness of this whole thing aside, how did Shahid get his hands on that missile? Missiles. He's got more. He stole them from Halbeck and we need them back before he gets any more trigger happy. Then we want you to kill him. Understood. But if the opportunity presents itself, should I take him alive? If you can. Either way, we want him out of the picture and away from any more taped broadcasts. If I can bring him back here, I will. All right, then. Pack your gear. You're heading to Saudi Arabia. Not coming with me? I'll be there in spirit. And on video and radio when needed, Agent. And I just got here. Oh, well. I'm gonna miss this place. I doubt it. I'll contact you when you reach Saudi Arabia. And we're on our way. Nice haul. Did everything. Care to explain how Halbeck lost its missiles? Old news. An accounting error. The missiles. You didn't lose them, did you? Angry, Mr. Thornton? Because of what happened in Saudi Arabia. Mike, can you read me? I'm getting lots of interference. I made it to Saudi Arabia, sir. I'm at the safe house. I guess that much. See any shadowy agents in trench coats at the airport? No, sir, I don't think so. That was a joke, Mike. But stay on your toes anyway. Finding Shahid is your primary objective. Trouble is, we don't know his location. But we have three leads. An arms dealer, Najri, is believed to have sold the missiles to Shahid, and he's currently operating in Saudi Arabia. If you can intercept him, maybe he can tell you where Shahid is, or guide you to the missiles. Do we have anything else on Nazri? Nothing more than what's in his dossier. If you can manage to make any contacts and find out more, we'd welcome it. We also tracked down the location of an airfield Shahid used in the past. If you can sneak in and plant a listening device, we may be able to track flight Shahid is using to move through Saudi Arabia. And the third lead? We've got the coordinates of an al Samad detention camp, also used as a stockpile for weapons. We suspect the missiles may be stored there. Is there any way to be sure the missiles are there? Not at this time. The area is dug into the side of a canyon, and getting reliable satellite imagery when sandstorms aren't blowing has been almost impossible. We'll want you to go in alone, recon the area, and shut down their radar and communications. Once that's down, we can call in air support and hit the camp hard. No pressure. And no backup. Get used to it. It's the job. You check out your new home yet? It's got some perks you might be interested in. Full security system? A computer with a hub connection so fast you'll feel like you're going back in time. What, to the Stone Age? Please. You can do dossier research, encrypted emails, and if need be, access some of the weapons dealers in the area. That'll be done on your own dime, however, using whatever funds you can find in Saudi Arabia. I understand, sir. We wouldn't want Alpha Protocol tied to any weapons trafficking in the Middle East. Exactly. There's also a weapons locker in the main living area. Open it up. Help yourself, but use the ammo and armor you think suits the mission. When you're ready to head out, just use the front door, or access the missions from the main terminal. I'll have already uploaded all the mission specs to your PDA. You can review them at any time. Alright, so... is that it? I guess so. Westridge. Great. Home sweet home. And what a lovely home it is. Ten points! This means chain shot. Oh, yes. Now, where to first?